I would like to talk today about the Chinese classics. From ancient times, about 1000 BC or a little earlier, up until the Tang Dynasty, which would be about 700 to 900 AD, Chinese literature was very prolific. After that time, uh, the Song and the uh, Mongol and so forth, there were studies of it, but the, the basic ancient literary texts date from that early uh, 1000 BC to about 300 BC. And they're all contained in this book, which is called the 13 Classics. It includes the book of history, the book of poetry, but the most important ancient one is the book of changes. It's a very difficult book, and I brought it with me today to show you. Here it is in translation. I've also brought the Chinese text here, which I keep with me, but the, the best book to use to look at it is this translation of James Lake called The I Ching Book of Changes. It's still available, uh, you can buy it, and it's also online. So first I'm gonna talk about this briefly, then I'm going to talk about what an author, a very wonderful and deep author in the modern time says, when you read the I Ching and want to interpret it, read the Lao Tzu also, because the Lao Tzu is the best way, Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, uh, the Tao and its way, is the best explanation of this if you want to know how to use it. Not too many Westerners know that, they just translate this, and when Lega translated it, he didn't even think of the Lao Tzu. But I found this book, Lao Tzu I Ching, a wonderful, introduction both to understanding the I Ching and spiritually to grow. So I'll talk first of the I Ching, then I'll talk of the Lao Tzu. The I Ching itself is divided into 64 chapters. 8 times 8 is 64. The I Ching begins with uh, three unbroken lines, which is pure yang, and ends with three broken lines or six lines, which is pure yin. So there is yin, uh, it's six lines broken, and there is yang. When you look at it, you, let's see what it says here. The father is yang, and the mother is yin. The oldest son, oldest second son, and third son are all seen here. The oldest son on the bottom second son in the middle, and the first son, long line in top. And there's the mother, the six broken lines, with her eldest daughter, second daughter, and third daughter. So this is to say that a family is mother and father, and uh, three boys and three girls. This doesn't mean that you need to have three boys and three girls to have a family. What it means is that our life is broken into young father, yin mother, and it goes through three stages. Uh, eldest son, second son, third son, eldest daughter, second daughter, third daughter. Now, the reason for this is because in all that would be eight, and those eight refer to the directions, north, south, east, west, northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. So that actually is how the earth is set up, how the annual year is set up, and how our life is set up. I'm born, I mature, I marry or grow up, get a job, I get old, and I die. So that's in four stages. Also the year, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Also creation, the whole, the, uh, the beautiful universe, the stars, the earth, round and then the water. So everything is broken into those beautiful um, systems. Now what you do with the I Ching is, if you want to find out how you fit into it, in the old days you'd have stocks and you'd pull one out. But after the invention of money, then you decide which the lines are by throwing three coins. So I brought three coins and here's how we decide which chapter of the I Ching were to read today and find what our fate is or what our what we should how we should survive today. So you throw the pennies. In this case it's 
tails, tails, and head. And so that would be uh, oldest son. And then you throw them a total of six times, and then you end up with the six lines. And looking at that, then you look up the number and you find out what is your, what you should do or how you should behave today. So I randomly opened it to number 31. It's the Shen hexagram. And here's what it says. Shen indicates on the fulfillment of the, con of the conditions implied in it, there will be free course and success. You will be, you will have success. It will just come, you needn't worry. It's advantageous to depend on being firm and correct, however, and in marrying a young lady, there will be good fortune. Now, marrying a young lady doesn't mean I marry a young lady. It means I look at the lowest one, uh, the, the, the two broken lines and the one unbroken line, and that is the way I am to behave today to have good fortune. And uh, when you think of that, the oldest, second, and third daughter, the youngest daughter is the one who receives blessings, the oldest who works and the second. But the order of the daughters or the orders of the son show what they do. So I, as oldest son in my family, was given by my father the duty to help with the crops, to bring in the crops, and do much more than the others. And so that's what it refers to. And of course, you can interpret it your own way. Now, what is the important today that I wanted to say was, it was also a custom in the old times that when you read the I Ching, then you should also look at the Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching, the Tao and its way. And you should choose a chapter from in here, randomly, or again by throwing the coins and see what the number should be. And that's what I want to look at today. The Lao Tzu has the best of all the um, directions of how to use the I Ching today. So I brought it along with me. Here is the, I translated it. This is my book, A Taoist Cookbook. It's a humorous title. In this book, I have the 81 chapters of the Lao Tzu and 81 recipes. And the recipe is to keep us healthy, but the chapter by reading it is also to keep us spiritually healthy. So today, here are the meditations in throwing the coins. I, meditation 14 was the one I first came up with, and I'd like to read it to you. It's such a beautiful way for today to meditate. Can't see it, hear it, or touch it. It is the transcendent, apophatic Tao. Jump into it, swim in it, not too shiny on the surface, not too dark inside. Can't see it in front of me, can't catch up it from behind, but the reality of it is there. It is Tao's print in me. What this means is that when I empty my mind of all judgments, and of all thoughts, no images, even sacred ones. And when I empty my heart of all desires, selfish or other, and when I sit quietly, at that moment, I can talk to God. I know I've said it many times, but I meditated on every day. And this we should all remember. If you really want to pray, you must pray from your belly. And that is what we f finish up saying today. The Tao Te Ching is teaching the head is for judging, thinking. You'll never be peaceful while you're judging. The heart is for desiring. You'll never be happy while you're desiring. But the belly is for being aware of other people. And this is the basic teaching. And again, I know I've said it before, but I wanted to show you how it is the basic teaching of Lao Tzu. And it's the way we can understand the I Ching. You read the I Ching, what should I do? Stop all your desires. Don't do anything. Just be quiet. Then when you open your eyes, you won't look at yourself. Look around you. All the people around you 
What do you need? How can I help you today? I am here for you, just as Tao is here for you, generating you. That's the beautiful message I'd like to give today. Thank you.